Hola, and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including DuckTales. Woo! Which we're we getting into right now. <laughs> oh my uh, god. That was a very disheartened woo, but it's been woo. a while, so we need to get excited on. over this. This show's still on? <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> um, I, I, so I'm your host, Alex Bonilla, and uh, today I'm joined, uh, as usual, by Michelle Ander. Hello. And Steve Zeck. Hello. Uh, if you want to uh, co- uh, cover, uh, if you want to go look at previous discussions we've had on DuckTales episodes from last year, you can go find <laughs> that on OverlyAnimated.com. Um, you can also subscribe to us uh, at iTunes on OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes or where on your preferred podcatcher. And wherever you listen to us, we always appreciate any ratings and reviews. But yeah, today we'll be uh, finally getting into DuckTales again. Uh, we were covering the episodes of DuckTales as they aired in 2017. And after a long winter hiatus, we're finally back. Uh, we have The Spear of Selene, at, which aired on May 4th, and Beware the Buddy System, which aired on May 11th. So we're going to be talking about those two episodes today. And uh, yeah, I'd say these were fairly big episodes to come back yeah. with. A, mm-hmm. a strong return. Mm-hmm. Um, Michelle, uh, of these two, which one did you prefer or what, what stood out to you in terms of general impressions of just having DuckTales back? Uh, well, just in terms of having DuckTales back, I'm really glad it's back. I, I forgot how, like, intensely awesome the animation for this show is. Um, and it's, it's nice to be back. I... I kind of feel bad because I think I was a little more high on the Spear of Selene than I was on Beware the Buddy System. Just because the Buddy System episode had, it was like so action packed. It almost felt like too much was going on at some points. And I feel like for me, that was a little bit of a drawback. But both these episodes were like pretty fun. I I liked both of them a lot, like just compared to some of the other ones we've had. So, I mean, Yeah. Uh, okay, so v- very positive <laughs> reaction from Michelle. Um, Steve, what what did you think about these two episodes? Did you have one that stood out more than the other? I th- I have a hot take though on on the buddy system. I mm-hmm. think that's an episode that could probably be more enjoyable for people that've seen the old show or really the Disney Afternoon in general. So for for if, for newer fans, you can still enjoy it, but probably not as much because they don't get a lot of these old school references. Like oh, a dark green it. duck. Oh, oh, Steve here showing his 80s bona fides again. <laughs> la, la. Yeah, the dark green duck. I feel like I've seen him, but I, you know, very, like, vaguely yeah. understand what he was well, in the olden times of Disney. <laughs> well, well, to be fair here, I think I enjoy, I think uh, I enjoyed them both very close to the same, but I think uh, the uh, the first one, uh, Spirit Selene, I probably enjoy a little bit more mm-hmm. because... First of all, it has Donald Duck, one of my f- like my favorite Disney character of all time. Say what you want about Mickey and Goofy, Donald, he he was the funniest of them all. Yes. You know, I just love this. <laughs> oh no! Did you just die on the microphone? <laughs> that was Donald his Duck impression. impression. Steve, to... what what did you think of um his his bros? Um, Storkiles is huge man crush on Donald. Oh, I love the, the entire episode. He finally, Donald <laughs> finally, after all these years, all these decades, he finally gets some respect. Oh, I mean, a lot of respect and some, yes. some else. You ought to see it. If you ought to see some of the old cartoons, man, he he didn't get no respect from like other characters, especially the nephews. They never really they they were sometimes they could be so mean to him. And of course, Chip and Dale, those little jerks. They were uh, okay. We don't need to get into all the Disney wow. characters you have qualms with. <laughs> okay, okay. But, but I, I agree with you that Donald, like in this show, has been portrayed as very respect, like respect worthy. Like he seems yeah. to have a very yeah. adventurous past. So like that, that's not, if you like Donald, that's definitely a good thing yeah. that they've added def- to him there. Definitely her, and definitely this guy uh, has definitely has a little man. A oh, duck totally. crush on him. Man, <laughs> duck crush on him. No, like a, a bro crush, bro if crush, not yeah. a man crush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's very cool. Um, a little brother, but not really a little brother. He looks up to him like a big brother. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll definitely talk a little bit more about Starkeys and Donald go, going on. And, but, yeah. this is, and Spe- Spear Spear Sling. The episode had all the like main characters. 
except for Beakley, pretty much. You had <laughs> all the nephews. You had Webby, Large Pack, Scrooge. Uh, well, the uh, buddy system was very small cast. It had well, only... not small cast, but it didn't have the main character. Yeah, it yeah. had like, extra people. It had no yeah. Webby, no Huey, no Louie. Right. But yeah, just, just to get my general impressions in here, uh, I, I think that this is a really strong return for DuckTales. Like when we were ending, we ended with episodes like uh, the Impossible Summit of Mount Neverest. Yeah, the Neverest the, the, one. The <laughs> Internship of Mark Beaks. Like they were okay episodes, but like it, it didn't really add to character. Like it's just, at this point, you were already just leaning on the established stereotypes. Whereas, like, uh, these two, the Spear of Selene, there's a lot of Donald characterization there. You get some conflict between Webby and, and Dewey for once, which is mm-hmm. nice to have. And but where the buddy system, like, La- Launchpad McQuack finally gets an episode of actual, oh. like, character that isn't just based on being dumb. <laughs> like, I know. So that's great. <laughs> Uh, and also, like, the introduction of uh, of uh, Fenton and Gizmo Duck, uh, you re- return guys like Gyro, Mark Beaks, like, they all have little parts in there the as well. Statue, they all land. The Scrooge so, statue, the horse with the Scrooge oh, head statue. Yeah, he, he's in return too, right? From, I, like, the pilot. Why did we see him before? He was well, terrifying. Well, well, one thing, I've been reading the comics, and he does appear in the comics in terms no, of... It, and, and here in the show, in the yeah. first episode, when I know. they go into like his garage, I know. I'm talking about he <laughs> returns there. in the comics. Okay. He, he returns uh. post comics and turns to Scrooge, tries to reform him. And the early comics also does like some flashbacks to Della Duck, so you kind of know the answer that she's not a bad person or duck. Okay, you seem yeah. eager to want to talk about this, so <laughs> we'll go there first, because I, I do think that that's the headline coming out of this, because uh, from the very beginning of the show, we, we at the end of the pilot, you introduce the whole, where where's my mom? So now we, we finally get back to this after like seven episodes. I think we, we also did this in the dime chase, where they at the end of that episode, they found the letter. So now we're investigating it for the first time. So after all this... Oh, what, what Steve, what do you think yeah. about what I, the mom I, situation is? Yeah, I said in a Discord, this is very much like Rose Quartz's story on Steven in terms of the mystery, the doubt, is she a good p- person or not? This It just reminds me so much of what's going on in Steven, has gone on in Steven Universe. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that that's true, and it, to the point where Celine herself, like, she kind of just outright says, "Like, your mom did love a good mystery." <laughs> so yeah. just like, yeah. well, we don't know. Um, um, uh, Michelle, do, do you have any Della takes coming out of this episode? Well, I mean, Celine speaks well of her and seemed to know her personally. Like, they were actual friends um before so if she thinks she was like pretty okay like it isn't to say she's like a hundred percent in the clear Della but I feel like it if you're gonna have somebody vouch for you outside your family Celine's a good person to get an opinion from um Mm -hmm. so like I mean I'm not that worried but like she she did seem to like steal something Maybe not an actual spear, but, like, something. And, you know, there's kind of bad blood there. And Donald was saying, like, she was the one that always got hurt in the past, right? When they go on adventures together. So there's definitely more to the story. But um, I'm not... I don't think she's, like, a 100% bad person, that's for sure. I kind, I kind of wonder, is Storkelis and Celine, like, related? Are they, like... I kind of, that'd be interesting if well, they were, we, so they could be sort of counterpoint to Donald and Della. Well, we, we already know that Starkleys is Zeus's son. So yeah. Like, uh, th- th- there is family relationship, but who knows? Um, uh, yeah, I, I can think of a st- I like to think, like, uh, perhaps in the flashback of seeing the four of them hang out together, just <laughs> group thing. Like, the uh, who's fierce and foursome. <laughs> yeah, uh, another thing that that comes out of this, uh, it's Celine, she, they're following this note that's like, I took the spear of Celine, but once they actually meet Celine, wait, there's no spear, I don't have a spear. Yeah. <laughs> so like, uh, another question we have to come here, what actually is the spear of Celine anyway? I, I thought, I assumed the spear of Celine was a ship, since at the end of the uh, pilot, it, this is, it was a painting of a ship, that's what I always thought, so... For me, it was sort of a shock that this was sort of a mystery. I thought she took the ship. She took the like the family ship to go on an adventure or something. 
Yeah, to, to be fair, uh, huh. until this episode, we didn't know Celine was a person. <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. So it could have been anything, really. Um, I, I've also seen the theory that it could be like a plane situation, since also there's pilots seem to be a common thing in the Duck universe, so she could have taken mm-hmm. that as well. Um, Michelle, do you have any theories on what exactly we're even looking for here? Well, Webby was saying, like, maybe it's not a literal spear. Maybe it's something else. So, I mean, I don't know where to go with that. But I think it's definitely leading to something maybe more figurative um, than an object. So that would be interesting. I mean, I feel like they should ask Scrooge and Donald if they know anything. Because it could be that they know exactly what she did. Mm -hmm. And, like, so, like, why not go to the source of the information or as close as they can get? I don't know. Yeah, and, and I remember in the Dime Chase episode, like that's where uh, where Dewey says something like, uh, "Well, we have to keep this a secret. Nobody should know we were looking for this." But why? <laughs> why? Yeah, he framed the picture. Scrooge framed that that in like her little archive, so he he preserved it for a reason. So yeah. I, I mean, somebody would have found it eventually. Also, I, how are they hiding that sphere when they leave the island? <laughs> I don't know. I don't so, know. Someone's gonna say they stole. Uh, it's gonna notice they stole it. <laughs> I, I do feel though they're setting up for a major conflict within the triplets that when Huey and Louie finds out they've been keeping this a secret, they're going to be very mad at Dewey. Yeah, that, that's, that's like, definitely that's a possibility. Yeah. And, you know, personally, here's a little prediction. I'm thinking. I think the first, like someone, other outsiders are gonna gonna get roped into this before Huey and Louie gets gets wind of the situation and that's gonna hurt them even more. Um I don't know who perhaps maybe the that, that crazy librarian lady or or maybe <laughs> Lena. That's those are like my oh, main, like Lena. possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. And then like you're like she's not even a blood relative. Like and neither is Webby. So you you let them in on the secret and not us? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've also seen like some far out theories that are like connecting Magicka and Della together. Like, I, I don't know if that's even possible. <laughs> they would be the same person, but don't we don't know what like, she did. If she did take, if Della took something to represent the spear, like maybe she used it for a purpose, like to yeah. to fight someone. I don't know, um, but maybe maybe they are connected. Those two points. Um, now, an- another big part of this uh, is the whole Webby Dewey side plot, and like it, it culminates in this uh, sequence where they are actually in, in front of the Garden of Celine, and uh, they read the prophecy. Webby's like, oh, "It has to be betrayal, right?" And at the- at this point is where Dewey's fine. Like, no, I I don't want to know the truth, and like Webby goes along and is like, "Fine, I- I'll respect that, and we won't go." And then Dewey changes his mind again, and they go in. Yeah, he like, <laughs> like split second changes his mind no let's do it i've got to find out why it's like but okay but that whole fight about not wanting to know oh, yeah like it was very change quickly. Of mind. yeah yeah like i'm like at, 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 at you have we we keep the perspective that they're kids right so yeah. the, the their minds change very quickly but at the same time i, I do want to say like i do i do think the sequence worked in like raising the tension for sure just oh, because i sure. don't think they've really fought before well they probably have but like it, it, that situation just stood out that they would even come to that kind of blow so like even pushing each other aside and things like that so i i definitely want to praise the show for for getting emotional stuff out of their main characters which is something that's usually been reserved for the side characters like donald and uh, scrooge i don't want to say he's a side character but like <laughs> he just yeah but, he does his own thing though for sure yeah but like d- doing it with the kids is something that is necessary going forward if you want us to care about them and the, the, that 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 was a, a good uh, an effective sequence i thought I agree with that. And I also like I like that oh man, I don't I still don't remember the names, but I like that blue shirt. Um <laughs> you know, he, he takes he takes Webby's hand and he pulls her through. Like he's letting her discover this very personal thing with him, even though she isn't quite family. Um and at the end when he's hugging Celine, he like pulls her into the hug too. I just like I like that they're really including Webby in like all of this and making her a pretty prominent character because that's a decision people made and I think it's a really good one because they could have just been like ah she's not related plus she's the girl but I'm like really glad that's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you about the old show. No, uh, I don't you, know. you don't. You don't need to know. tell us about the old show in every really single point. No, but you know, I think maybe that's what they did. What, what Michelle that's did. All. So that's what they did, and they're doing the opposite here. How much better it is. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> and one thing I hope they don't do, uh, hope like the fandom doesn't do, is ship Dewey and Webby because they're doing these missions together. That's just, yeah. I don't know. Wait, I, wait, 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 wait. All three of them. I don't think she has any particular closer relationship with any of them. Yeah. Although, to be fair, the show has really only delved into his, her relationship with Dewey. We haven't really seen her alone with the other guys as much but uh. I mean, she's had her episodes with them yeah, she's had her episodes with them i mean it's just maybe the, it's that webby has this like secret that she and blue shirt share um, yeah yeah like, and like the, the, this is the, the, really the only episodes thing. with huey and louie were just sort of one like standalone stuff this is like part of an ongoing arc right yeah. right so I, I guess that's why it stands out more but uh, yeah, they, they definitely work to, together well, so uh, I'm fine seeing more of them. Mm -hmm. um, also, in this, so we, we already discussed her, but we have Celine here showing up at the end. Um, she's voiced by Nia Vardalos, mm -hmm. uh, most famous for B Big Fat Greek Wedding. Um, our overly animated listeners may know her as Mrs. Diaz from Star vs. the Force of the Moon. <gasps> but um, yeah, how do you guys like the, go the goddess of the moon? <laughs> she seems super chill. I like her. She was more chill than I thought she'd be as a god. Like, at first, I thought she was actually Della. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, it, it shouldn't have not, been. But we're not going like, to fire this soon. I mean, you never know. <laughs> no. well, uh, well, yeah, I thought she was cool. Um, she seemed very chill, like Michelle said. Um, she does look like a goddess. Um, I do sort of wonder, though... Um, who do you think? Well, are they gonna get anyone major to voice Della in this show? Is she ever gonna yeah. talk? Is she, is she... I'm. I mean, I'm sure we'll hear her speak. It might be like a flashback or something. Yeah, but, yeah that's what if, I mean. If we hear her talk, the first one will be a flashback. But yeah, yeah it remains to be seen on that front how how long we're gonna stretch this out. Because admittedly, it had been like seven episodes, but these are 22 minute episodes since we've even talked about Della. So, yeah, uh, we're probably going to stretch this for a while. But it, it was nice to definitely check in on this for sure. Um, the, the other side of this episode was uh, Do uh, Donald Scrooge and the other nephews getting into fight with Zeus and Storkules. Um <laughs> uh, I, I really like Storkules. <laughs> Me too! I cannot believe that, like, they boarded and animated his, like, meeting Storkules with Donald getting his face, like, stuck between his pecs. That was, like, oh. again, a decision somebody made, but it's so great. I'm so happy. <laughs> and then, like, later, he, he sculpts Donald into, like, an Adonis, like, with, like, a perfect uh -huh. Roman statue. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, no, it's just like in general, like he's just very lovable, very sweethearted. Yeah, he's very and, supportive like, every time any of them win. Like he's a pretty down chill dude. I yeah, I really, I, I kind of want to see a flashback of them as children of little um, what's his name? Scorchily. I want to see yeah, Scorchily. Yeah, yeah, I want to see little Scorchily like looking up to Big Brother Donald. I think that'd be kind of cute to see. Well, see, the, the the other interesting part about, about this subplot is giving us a little bit more insight into Donald's past because yeah. Starkley's talks about like, oh, you were a great adventurer and like you were my friend and all. and But also like talking like, hey, where, where's Della? <laughs> Don, mm -hmm. Like Donald just has that very sad scene, just like him looking down and like being silent. And I, I thought it, that was, it was... It was an emotional moment. I thought that was very well done how he never had to say anything and how mature the show is and doing that like a lot of kids shows they gotta sp spill everything out they gotta spill everything out here they do a very good job of conveying the message without actually saying it out loud yeah um, um michelle how do you feel about like donald's character in this episode versus how he's been portrayed previously I mean, I feel like it's very in character, but we also get a sense of, you know, the Donald before he was the uncle, I guess, when he was younger and went off in adventures. But clearly, I mean, it's hard to say if he was, like, really confident in his adventures. And it's been so long since we've done this show that maybe we've gotten flashbacks or pictures or something where he was having a great time. But clearly, like, those have taken a toll on him. And now he's a much more cautious person in general. Um, which is really interesting. Like, what could have made him that way? And how does that fit into, like, what happened with Della? 
Well, we have the, this uh, this big line at some point where it's like uh, people always get hurt yeah. when, uh, in the adventures, and like at the end, him uh, him like deciding to step into the fight is like no one's getting hurt today. Mm. So it does definitely seem like there was some incident. Uh, that, we've always been hinting at this since the 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 opening episode, but there does seem to be some incident that stopped Donald and Scrooge from working together, and that that could be related yeah. to Donald's hesitance here as well. And, yeah. and it, it makes sense that it would have to do with Delicus. Like, Donald takes it so personally. But, like, Scrooge still goes off on adventures all the time. Whereas Donald, like, really isn't... He wasn't really into that until the the nephews really, like, forced his hand a lot of these times. So that's, like, interesting, too. Like, why is Scrooge kind of okay with it? Is it just his personality? Or is it because it's more personal to Donald? Um, and he can't get back into the spirit of adventure I, because of what happened? I think it's just how Scrooge and Donald deal with grief in different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Donald just just wanted to just forget about adventures and stuff. I think Scrooge went these adventures to forget all the pain and just that's the way he dealt with stuff. And Donald dealt with stuff another way. I guess he kind of he had to raise his like her kids, right? So I guess he mm-hmm. couldn't go on adventures anymore. Yeah, that, that's also a thing that I, I don't think the show has really explored, like Donald's parenting. Like, yeah, like, that's I'm, true. Yeah, well, like, we we focused a lot on like them finally meeting uh, Scrooge and like them having adventures with Scrooge, but we haven't really looked into the before Scrooge era. <laughs> it's just them yeah. and Donald. Yeah, but, we get but, that that brief time when they're on the boathouse together, and he keeps trying to stop them from like exploding the boathouse basically by being <laughs> scrappy young kids. But uh-huh. yeah, he's like their dad and their mom. He yeah. maybe being a parent has really changed his like outlook yeah. on adventures a lot too. I kind of want to see. I want to see Donald go to like parent teacher night. You know, we haven't seen him going to school yet. <laughs> yeah, that's I the thing. I don't yeah, think these kids true. go to school, man. I have an i. Well, I do got an idea of who the teacher. Could be. I I know you have heard this character, a little character called Daisy. Hmm? Okay, okay. But I think all okay, people keep, know who I'm talking about. Daisy. <laughs> keep, Are Donald and casting. Daisy together in this universe? And also, why does no one ever talk about the nephew's dad still? Because uh, he was a deadbeat, probably. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, well, yeah. Because uh, mom in this universe is Della. So, like, what does that make Daisy? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't so, know. <laughs> But Daisy is not in this show right now, so yeah, we don't need to talk this much about yet. her. But I, uh, well, but, but, well, um, her her voice actress was on. Uh, I think she was, won an episode. We're not, we're, she's not in this here. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, really. I know. Um, I, 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 the, a character that is in this episode <laughs> is is Zeus, who and his voice actor who is in this show is Michael Chiklis. <laughs> <Yo>! <laughs> But yeah, Z- uh, Zeus is a bit of a butt, but I-, I enjoyed his lines, especially his petty... I-, I feel like everybody has a petty rivalry with Scrooge, <laughs> like everybody who's yes. ever met him. But um, Z- Zeus, the god of thunder and of hospitality, apparently, um, yeah, has not know that had either. this grudge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, t- tell me, is it hospitality if you give if you, all you present is a bag of leftover chips? Is it still hospitality? He gave grapes too. One of the nephews was nominal on some grapes. Mm. True, true. Oh, okay, so uh, he he did enough to. He, did enough, he his diversified role. his his food palate yeah. enough. He did the yeah. Louis. He did the bare minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's about right. It, it's about right for a big <laughs> god, really. Um, but yeah, so from there, um, other just minor things that come out of this episode. Um, they're crash landing on Ithaquack Island off the coast of Greece. <laughs> wow! So, uh, can, great, great duck puns as usual, guys. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, when they have this uh, this competition about to getting the the bag of wins, and to, uh, Huey does uh, an interesting move, just parachuting across to the other side. Um, the Storkeles calls him Hubert, Tabor of Winds, and Llewellyn, Fighter Llewellyn. of Storms. Don't <laughs> use so, my real name! <laughs> that was fascinating. Yeah, L- Llewellyn is, a, is an interesting name. <laughs> but does anybody want to try taking taking a stab at a spelling Llewellyn? <laughs> no. I do want to guess to what is Dewey's like real name. Oh, that, that's another thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know uh, how you, how do you make it to a Dewey into a real like fancy name? Yeah, Hubert is somehow the most normal. Yeah, yeah that is pretty normal. 
Yeah. Uh, also, that there's this one sequence that I found pretty funny when they're going through the temple and they find this uh, big monster. It's like, where's the spear? Oh, the spear of Poseidon, and it's like, it <laughs> no, no, no. And so, he just so lets them the, go. Well, he gives them directions. Yeah, he gives directions too. <laughs> And, and then Dewey comes back. It's like, by the way, I'm sorry for calling you ugly. I'm yeah. sure you're fine looking for monsters. And then he said, and the monster, not really. Yeah. Like, not really. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah, yeah I, I found that to be a pretty funny scene. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else? Um, there's the old horror trope at the end of the girl just doing haunting singing. Mm-hmm. And uh, Louis convinces her to stop singing by convincing well, that they well, can make money off of well, it. Well, her real yeah. voice. I <laughs> I love how like, when she talks, like it just sounds like a very mannish voice. I thought very that was raspy. Yeah. Raspy, yeah. yeah. I liked it. Oh, here's a quick question: that that the final challenge that Scrooge and Zeus do to get off the island. What game is that? It's not croquet, and it's no, like, a like a giant. Ver- I, I honestly don't know what it is, though. Yeah, it's like a giant version of marbles, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I couldn't figure out what sport that was. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like a uh, fancy European sport. Yeah, or a fancy Greek sport, maybe. That oh, yeah, maybe it's a Greek sport. Uh, I love yeah. how, like, Donald just, he just doesn't want to have any of it. He's not even trying. And he's trying he to somehow leave the whole keeps, time. He keeps yeah. winning. Yeah. Like, he, like, he, but he keeps sort of winning in terms of he, if he doesn't want to win, he'll win. He's like, he is the reverse gander, like... Yeah, <laughs> no, and also just Starkly is just dumb as a brick. Well, wait, but, yeah. but but that's oh, why we love him. By the way, have they met Lucky Gander yet? Uh-huh. I, have they have, have they ever met him? I kind of wonder. Well, we, we, didn't we have the Lucky Gander episode? No, I'm not talking about Zeus and all those like. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah the, your your classic. Does everybody know everybody? <laughs> question. <laughs> He's sort of part of the family, so just guessing. Maybe, maybe. Um, so so now from here we can move to the other episode, which I think was the more hyped one by the by the general public because, well, that's uh, because the, of yeah, yeah but because we have the introduction it. of Gizmo Duck uh, and his his normal version of uh, Fenton uh, Crackshell Cabrera, voiced by Lin Manuel Miranda, who yeah, most people that was the will hype. know. If, yeah, they, they'll know him as the EGOT winner. Or, <laughs> uh, but um. Yeah, you're you're impre- well. First, let's go to Michelle, who I met, like me. We don't really have any connection to Gizmo Duck or like nostalgic <laughs> characters here. Well, what do you just think of him in this episode? Um. Well, I guess he's a thing now that'll come back into play because everyone wants him apparently. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's fine. I mean, he has the kind of actiony vibe that feels very. Um, right for the show in terms of it being like a Saturday morning kind of cartoon vibe so I'm here for that he seems fine I didn't know there was like so much going on with him being a prominent character in the old show mm-hmm. um, but he, he it definitely feels like an introduction to a character who we're gonna see more of um, so I felt that weight at least going in totally blind Okay, now Steve, please educate us as to the, <laughs> his, the, the history of Gizmo Duck, the history of Fenton, well, and I just, um, I could like how, how prominent he was. Well, in, he was a prominent character in the second season, and okay. it's it's pretty. I'm like, I'll do the Cliff Note version. He was Scrooge's accountant. He's also Gizmo Duck. Scrooge was the only one who knew his identity. Um, he lived with his mother. He had like a, sounds about right. He had like a, <laughs> he had a he had a girlfriend like had a girlfriend, and he was kind of a wacky type of accountant. He I kind of he's found him wacky. kind of a yeah I I found the old well Fenton. he's wacky here too yeah but, but yeah but I found the old Fenton though can be kind of annoying. I like this Fenton much better. Yeah, like a, a, but as for Gizmo Duck themselves, they're both even. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, I'd say that like uh, his uh, his appearance as Fenton is very interesting. Like he's like always being beaten down upon by his superior Gyro. Oh, yeah. and, like he, he has his office in the bathroom. Alex, are you still are you still on the evil Gyro theory? Not not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like I I think at this point we're kind of clear he's just a jerk. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, no, you're right. Like back then, I was like, well, is he gonna become a villain? But like, uh, I, I think that's less of a possibility now. I'm not gonna rule it out. I don't out, blame but, you because uh, in the last episode, he was talking like a real, like real cr- cr- creepy. He was. Talking- yeah, I, I, I went back because it turns out that the the great dime chase is, a, is actually a very important <laughs> episode to these two. Oh, really? But like, uh, yeah, because in that episode, the mo- the robot they're chasing was powered by a bulb, and like that also ends up being the technology that ends up causing the problems here as well. <laughs> and at, at the end, when Gyro has solved this, he's like, "Oh well, the the solution to this is to be able to control the robot. Gyro is robot." <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he re- he writes down Project Blatherskite, which ends up being the name of the project that Gizmo Duck becomes. So it, that that seems to have been the setup. Yeah. Now what's interesting is that there it's like the idea was that gyro would be the robot so i assume gyro was the design and gizmo duck for himself yeah so what i'm thinking is is there a possibility where we get some kind of conflict thing where gyro wants to claim gizmo duck for himself sort of thing i maybe i don't know i think he just wants a recognition and i think he wants the money as long as he gets paid i think he's happy I don't know. He seems to be very obsessed with uh, I'm an innovator. <laughs> I, True. I, I think so. But I don't think he wants so, to put himself in danger. Yeah, like at the end, we also get the whole, like, uh, I need this to be idiot proof and you're the idiot. So. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, he might be finally just risking uh, somebody he'll, else's body he'll, for this. He'll let he'll let Fenton do all the work and then try to claim as much credit as he can that he's the brains behind the brawn when the time is right. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think uh, Michelle, you alluded to this like the it's a lot more actiony than other episodes we've had. Um, uh, Steve, I mean, we've yeah. seen action in plenty of episodes, but very just like oh, this is this is like going to be a very contained actiony thing that will last a certain amount of time in the episode, and oh, now there's a new thing happening. Oh, it's kind of tied to the first thing. Um, that that general kind of vibe, which like maybe that sounds like I'm saying it with disdain, but like it's very it, it's very like nostalgia for me. So like I think it's I think it's nice. It has a place. I I'm, I'm glad there's like deeper plot and other episodes to follow at the same time. Yeah. So I feel like mm-hmm. it, I feel like it's a good mix of both. No, and, and the thing is, like they did do setup on this episode on this episode. So like, yeah, that, with that, the like bulb thing lets... coming back. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So like that alone lets you think like there is some effort being put into this. And especially if you're dealing with nostalgic characters like this where like there is a lot of weight to like trying to reintroduce them and I- I- improve them a little bit while not changing their essence. So, Steve, how do you feel about the changes that were made? Like are they very uh, are they very different from their original incarnations? Well, Gyro or, is uh, very different. Do... Mm-hmm. The original Gyro, he wasn't this had this much of an ego. He was actually very nice, and uh, he was also kind of. Uh, I don't. I don't think Richard Gyro was as smart as this Gyro. I mean, the old Gyro probably wouldn't figure out that Fenton was Gizmo Duck. He pretty much figured out very quickly in this episode. So they're give and take. He's smarter, but he's a little more of a jerk. Do you prefer <laughs> this version or the old version? Yeah. Uh, I think I prefer this version to be honest, because the guy. Gladi- well, in the old show, I don't know, he just, he kept making these mistakes, all his inventions turned evil, and they never really mentioned it like a recurring thing. Here, they, mm-hmm. they like, they're mentioning it. It's like, it's a thing. All your inventions turn evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and I agree that, like, Gyro, like, without the context of the previous show, but, like, Gyro in this, in this episode is a pretty good character. Like, he, he's a bit of a jerk, but, like, also he's able to, like, point out things that are wrong. Like, he, he has this rivalry with Mark Beeks, which yeah, I, I, I like know, it a lot. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, so like, uh, and and at the end, he like accepts him back, uh, accepts Fenton back into the into the fold. So like, he has sort of a heart, I guess. He has but... sort of a heart. Sort of a heart. But uh, speaking of heart, we also have uh, Launchpad being the main character here. Um, what what uh, in the past we've talked about Launchpad like having good episodes, but he's also had episodes where he's pretty one note. So, uh, well, Michelle, how how do you feel about Launchpad in this episode? Oh, poor Launchpad. He just, like, he just wants Scrooge to be his dad and tell him good job when he tries hard. Oh. I, I can't <laughs> hate him for that. I think that's really sweet. And he actually did get the good job at then. It was really sad that the more it seemed clear that Scrooge didn't even know he got his license, the more he was, like, excited that there was a potential surprise party. 
Oh, yeah. That was so, very sad. <laughs> so, so what you sound you say, Michelle? Launch pack is it's essentially he's Zeus from Gravity Falls. Um. Oh no. Wait. Who's? Oh, Zeus. Yeah. Zeus. Zeus. He he what? pretty much says at the end at the very at the last episode, one of the last episodes, a plan. Make Grunkistan adopt me. <laughs> I feel like Launchpad might be a little more dumb than Seuss, but I still really <laughs> like I'm, I'm him. T- I'm talking about wanting wanting like the Scrooge to kind of sort of be like his dad. Oh, for sure. Here. But it, I think that okay. might be complicated a little by the fact that you know, like Scrooge is also his employer. Yeah. So it's not exactly. Well, I guess um, I guess Grunkle Stan was kind of Seuss's employer too. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, I I think Launchpad had an excellent episode here because you you yeah. get the emotionalness of like him wanting approval and like him being disappointed, fighting for his job. Yeah. And, like, uh, but, and, and uh, but at the end, he's like a useful a useful character still. Like he's doing all the driving and stuff. You have the whole like drive with your guts thing come back into play. And uh, and also like he's still being funny during all this. <laughs> like he's got mm-hmm. a lot of good oh, I love I love how episode. he like says. My friend, let's call yeah. him not launch tag, and then he yeah. gets the whole thing, and then and at the end he's like, "You're you in this situation." Yeah, you're <laughs> you in this situation. <laughs> what would you tell me, them? <laughs> Uh, I, I like the line at the at the end where he's like, "Take that, you bucket of bolts." Wait, is that offensive? Yeah, no, <laughs> that's not a right That was really good too. Well, how oh, about how, how about having all those notes in on the windshield, like? How does put oh, up your drive? You can't head. see. That's a dangerous oh. thing to do. And then he takes them with him on the scooter. Oh man! Yeah, it just keeps crashing, keeps crashing. <laughs> he keeps finding new, smaller wheels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, also, there's a good, uh, at the end, like he comes with Scrooge, and Scrooge is like, "Oh, I, I'll never find a driver as crazy as me, so you get to stay." Yeah, and he. Uh, and he's like, uh, all I need is your approval. And he tries to break the license, yeah, he, but he can't. Please don't break that. <laughs> please keep like, the license. Keep, keep the license. Uh, oh, here's a little tidbit. A little well, trivia. I just want to say, the, the reason person. that's funny is because, like, in so many shows, like, they rip up the license. And it's like, why is the license paper? Why are you able to rip this up? No. <laughs> like, finally, there's a show, like, they're plastic. No, like, you can't rip them. Oh, I just want to give you a little note here. It's like his birthday is on the on the day the the premiere of the original series was. Right, uh, September eighteenth, nineteen eighty-seven. Yeah, so that's a nice little little Easter gag right there, a little Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, speaking of the original show, the the opening of this episode is apparently just a sequence from Darkwing Duck, oh. <laughs> which was uh, also a very popular sh- ca- character oh. back then. Steve, if you would like to share so, with okay, us, okay, Darkwing Duck was uh, sort of a spinoff of Ducktales. Mm-hmm. It premiered in 1991, and I think went on for like till 1993. Darkwing Duck himself, voiced by someone very familiar to us all, Lord Boxman himself, Jim <gasps> Cummings. Oh my God, Lord <laughs> Boxman! Oh, Michelle, you didn't. Was, oh, you so didn't great. recognize his voice. <laughs> no, I didn't. I recognized him as the cat from Cat Dog, but not from this duck guy. Uh, okay. <laughs> Jimmy Cummings has done a lot of things. Finally, though, our two podcasts, like OK KO and DuckTales, has a little crossover here. So I might be a little biased, but I will, I will say I think Lord Boxman is Jim Cummings' magnum opus. Wow. And Dark and Duck is probably his. I think Dark and Duck is probably his most famous character anyway. Yeah. So, and yeah. Um, in this version is a TV show, and I'm guessing. The, um, Darkwing Duck is like uh, the Adam West Batman, like live action. No, no. Like, yeah, here, here's a question: Is is Darkwing Duck in this universe an animated or live action? Show? I'm pretty sure it's live action because <laughs> he does it on stunts, right? Yeah, it's live action, and I'm I'm waiting okay. for the episode when we meet the uh, the actor. Oh. He's kind of like an old man actor, and Launcher gets to meet his hero. Yeah, actually, you're right because I, I I do have written here that Launchpad at some point says like Jim Starling gonna, was the actor. I just imagine. Yeah. I just imagine it's gonna be like that episode of Kim Possible when Ron met the uh, ferret, the uh, ferret super ferret guy voiced by Adam West. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna happen. I'm hoping, and maybe, and maybe secretly, Darkwing Duck is real. And he's uh, maybe Launchpad and, is gonna meet him for his birthday. Yeah, that would yeah maybe Launchpad's gonna be like the uh, gonna be like the uh, Terry McGillis. To his Bruce Wayne. 
the new Darkwing Duck. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know there was a, there was a lot of hype about Darkwing Duck as well. Uh, I I did find this a very interesting way to open the episode. Like at first, yeah. I was like, well, okay, where is this going? Yeah, I was like, wait, do, are we supposed to know who all these characters are? Did I skip an episode? <laughs> Again, like I well, said, this I, is... I thought it was just, it was like, because like the villains kind of reminded me a little bit of the Beagle Boys, just like in being yeah. very, like, yeah. like doing the classic robbing a bank kind of crimes. So I was like, okay, so these are just actual villains. It looks so, like a okay. comic book world to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's for too. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, the, yeah, so we'll see if we get more Darkwing Duck, whether it be in television form or in the real DuckTales universe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, other ra- random pieces from here. Um, oh, like, uh, as Steve mentioned, like, he's trying to, uh, Launchpad is waiting for a surprise party, so he keeps breaking everywhere. Surprise! Right. Surprise! Yeah. And, and then he finds the closet yeah. supplies. <laughs> So uh, sad. Oh, um, they, they break into it, it, but they find um, Scrooge with Gyro, and they're discussing a sound-powered train. Uh, I, I, I feel like technology is a bit ahead of us in this universe. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not foolproof. Clearly, they still have some more testing to do. I think a yeah. I think a soundproof train is kind of very dangerous. Like, you need sound so someone can see if a train's coming. And also, probably some villains can use that ability to, to commit crimes. So, I'm sure the Beagle Boys would do something with the soundproof train. So, Tyro, yeah, this might be a bad idea. Some, at, there's some extra proofing need, needed to be done here. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, we, we have the return of Mark Beaks here. We haven't really talked about him. But uh, he, he's kind of just the like the Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. Elon Musk. I, I guess now El- Elon him. Musk is him. <laughs> yeah. If I, at the end of the episode, it finally seems that he might actually become a villain more than just a nuisance because I never consider him a real villain. In I mean, I think he episode. functions as dangerously as a villain. That's why I like him because he doesn't try. He's just like by nature of who he is. He sucks so much that like bad stuff ends up happening around he's just, him. He's just an idiot. And, like, he, in, in real life, these kind of guys like, like Zuckerberg and Elon Musk, like some people think they're like doing stuff shady or like evil and stuff. So like it's kind of a very close analog. Mm-hmm. Got <laughs> but I wonder what to what um, extent he would get he would do to get Gizmo Duck um to be his. My- Maybe he'll make like a sketchy situation happen so that when Gizmo comes to deal with it, he'll snatch him up. Mm. Be like, hey, you're mine now, wink wink. Yeah, because that that's literally what he did in the first episode we saw him, right? Like he faked a whole yeah. like they stole my thing exactly. just to get the, the, the gum. He just so. wants attention. He's like a yeah. little boy who wants, wants to attention. Have all the things. He's like a magpie for technology. Yeah. But yeah, we're in, we're introduced to this uh, intern Fenton, who apparently is uh, very looked down upon. He's kind of st- b- bumbling. Um, he has the, he says that he's been moved to the bathroom, and he's like, "I'm just realizing the remark my boss made was not entirely complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> my my Poor ideas child. belonging here." Yeah, uh, and I um, well, I don't know. Fenton has two last names I find interesting. Yeah, Fenton but... Crackshell Cabrera. I, from what I saw, Fenton Crackshell is his original name, yeah. but like because Lin Manuel Miranda is being involved in this character, so they added a Hispanic last name to yeah. it. Well, it's it's an interesting I move. Don't... I don't know if it really means much if it doesn't affect the character yeah. at all. So but... you don't think he's like a mixed race? I mean, the thing is that with ducks, I don't see. Yeah. I, I'm not seeing races here. So or like, species. It's hard to... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he's a different species, he could be like a dog. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So like that that that's a that's a move. Like it is like changing the name of a of a character that exists is kind of a big move. Well, I'm sure for some people, but uh, yeah. You know, I'm, speaking of, I dogs, mean, it, it speak- depends a lot on what how much say Miranda has on well, the character. Speaking of dogs, did anyone notice? Roxanne is is back is again in it. I I noticed that <laughs> she was like a random reporter right in the crowd. Or yeah. I remember in the first or, episode, like she was looking for a job just like Donald. So I guess he found a job as a reporter. I'm going in my canyon. This is the same person. So yeah, yeah. I I, I wanted to be real too. But then where's Goofy in all of this? Where 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 has he been? I don't want to know. I no. <laughs> 
<laughs> what, you don't want all the Disney characters to show no, up? No, I think they I have just want I just want Daisy to show up. She's a very important part of the old comic book series. Maybe she's going to come in season two then. Yeah, yeah that's why like, I heard rumors. One, I, one, the producers like were asked about like, sort of like Daisy, and turn they hinted that maybe in season two. And like I said, I have my idea of how I would introduce her, and that she's the 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 one of the nephews' teacher, and the, and Donald meets her at a parent teacher conference, and at first they're very argumentary towards each other, and then eventually develop a relationship. But that's my nothing own breeds romance like arguments. <laughs> Well, yeah, but in the past, it's, oh, Donald and Daisy always been love at first sight. I wanted to see him do something different. Uh, this has been Steve's Fan Fiction Corner. Um, if you would like to subscribe to his uh, archive of our own accounts, please go follow him there. Um, well, but yeah, well, so I, 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 I've been, I said, I, as much as I love Donald, I'm, I'm a big Daisy fan, too. I've always preferred okay, her over okay, me. Okay, we got it, we got it. <laughs> so I'm sorry, um, I'm passionate. But, yeah. <laughs> But so, so yeah, and just to wrap up here, um, we, we got through a lot of big things. We, we got through Della, we got through Gizmo Duck, we got through the um, launch pad here. But what's uh, one thing from these episodes are you most excited to see a follow up on, uh, Michelle? Della. Okay. Della. <laughs> I want more Della stuff. Uh, okay, I'm Steve. Okay, uh. Oh no! Um, Pick I'm... one that isn't Daisy. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, 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 that's something with these episodes. Um, I don't want to say Della because Michelle already said it, so I want to do something different. Okay. I guess I want. I guess I want to meet Fenton's mom and see learn more about Fenton. <laughs> <All right. laughs> like I said, I mean, what you're most be... excited for Steve. I don't know. I'm just. Uh, I'm excited to see though. Who else is going to learn Gizmo Duck's identity? It'd be a funny little gag if every main character on the show knows his identity except for Scrooge, which would be a nice little role reversal from the old show. Okay, <laughs> that, that, that would actually be a good joke, so uh, <laughs> uh, I'll agree with you there. But yeah, Della was the thing that I know, that I was interested in from the first episode, and I'm still interested in it, even if this episode like it just continued the mystery. Well, I'm just being... <laughs> but, uh, well, the thing I, I'm most I definitely want to see more. The thing I'm most interested in for sure, though, is that Magicka storyline, but, but that's not really yeah. in these episodes, but... <laughs> yeah, th- that's true, that's true. Yeah, we, we need our, Le- our Lena. Oh, fits. I love yeah, Lena. I, I, w- I want to see more Lena, too, a lot. In a way, I, I like to see in a way, like Della and Serena, you know, Mirror, Webby, and Lena in a weird way. Perhaps they could do something there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what we get in these uh, upcoming episodes. Um, uh, for the next, it seems that Disney XD is going to be consistent with the, the airing of the of this show, which is kind of impossible comparing to other <laughs> networks we yeah. have to cover here. But um, on May 18th, we'll be airing The Missing Links of Morsher. And <laughs> May 25th, McMystery and McDuck McManor. Oh. Now, now th- these two episodes have aired internationally, but we're waiting for yeah. the U.S. premiere to talk about them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're expected to get more episodes every week into June, at least, if not longer. Oh. So we'll, we'll definitely be here to oh. keep covering the first season of DuckTales oh. for sure. Wait till you see the... Oh, Dylan's gonna not like the next podcast because what I'm gonna talk about. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. No, 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 no. Oh no, no, no! This is just please, a little hint, no. like of what okay. I know. It, okay. I know he's Dylan. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so un- until we get to-, to those episodes in about two two weeks or so, you can uh, find out all the info on our podcast at overlyanimated.com. If you want to join us on Discord to chat about uh, DuckTales, explain what you're more most excited for or want to give us information that we might have missed about these episodes or the past series, feel free to do so at overlyanimated.com slash Discord. We have a DuckTales channel as well as uh, sections for all the other shows we cover. Uh, you can always support us financially via Patreon at patreon.com slash overlyanimated. Thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Nicholas. And as always, uh, thanks to our executive uh, executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, Andy, and Hugh. Uh, besides DuckTales, we, we just did an OKKO okay <laughs> podcast, yeah. which included Jim Cummings. Okay. So, yes. So we, should, we, we should rename we, it the Jim Cummings podcast. <laughs> yes, we should. That's oh a good idea. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't want to risk doing an impression of that one. But, but yeah, we also have a Miraculous Ladybug. We have Steven Universe podcasts. So we, we've got a couple of shows going on. We've just had a Prince of Egypt podcast as well, if you're interested in animated movies. But yeah, so we'll, we'll be here for, for more DuckTales soon. I, I'm, I'm definitely more hyped about this show than I was before these episodes. So I, I'm glad that we've had it back. And uh, yeah, well, whenever we get this, we'll talk to you again. But until then, adios. Right. Bye. Bye-bye.